Okay, welcome back. And today we're going to be going over another video that's going to look at some more MPLS basics. And today's topic is going to be Pentultimate Hop Popping. And yes, that's a multiple. And no, I had no freaking idea what this meant the first time I saw it. Um, before we get into a definition of Pentultimate Hop Popping, let's go ahead and do a quick review of how an MPLS enabled router determines what outgoing interface to use for a packet that it receives. And if we remember back to the MPLS basics, um, there's really two places to look for the outgoing interface. If you receive a packet that's labeled, um, what you're going to do is you're going to look in your uh, label forwarding information base or LFIB and uh, say the packet comes in with a label of 19 router looks that up in the uh, LFIB and it's generally going to have one of the uh, three major operations the uh, swap, pop, or push and then the outgoing interface. Now uh, if you receive a packet that is untagged slash unlabeled it's not going to go to the LFIB because there's no reason because it doesn't have a label so <laughs> what it's going to do is it's going to do a normal routing lookup and it's going to go ahead and look at the routing table or the Ceph table and actually since um, enabling Ceph is a prerequisite of running MPLS and we're talking about LPN, MPLS enabled routers it's actually going to go to the Ceph table so it's going to get an IP packet say for you know 10.10.10 .10 .10 slash 0 I'm sorry slash 24 and it's gonna say <clears throat> how do I route this and it goes to the Ceph table it says go ahead and send that out Ethernet 0 let's say so there's actually two different methods for determining the outgoing interface based on whether you're dealing with a label packet or an IP packet or an unlabeled packet rather so again before we get into the definition of uh, pentultimate hop hopping let's go ahead and take a look at how we would expect an MPLS network to work um, just normally. So in this case R4 is going to be the end of the line. It could be the provider edge router, you know, slash egress router. If you remember back to the uh, MPLS definitions video, there's 80 bazillion ways to label these guys. But in this case it's going to be the end of the line for our prefix 4.4.4.4 slash 32 which is actually going to be the loopback zero interface on this router. So normal MPLS operation R4 says okay 4.4.4.4 slash 32 is in my local routing table therefore I have to assign it a local label. I'm going to give it label 20. So um, once I give it this label I'm going to tell my upstream neighbor via LDP, the label distribution protocol, that you know I have this prefix with label 20. It tells router 3. And router 3 has already learned this prefix uh, via IGP, you know, EIGRP, OSBF, whatever you're running. And it's already gone ahead and said, hey, you know, same step. I, um, I see this, this prefix in my routing table. Let me go ahead and give it a local label. I'm going to give it local label 19 and it will actually advertise that out to its upstream neighbor or neighbors in this case you know R2 sitting over here um, and it says oh R4 knows about this prefix and has given me has told me that its local label is 20 so when I build my LFIB my label forwarding information base what I'm going to say is you know if I receive a packet that's labeled with label 19 what I need to do is swap the label 19 with label 20 and go ahead and send it out to R4 via serial 00 whatever interface this is. So now back in R4 packet comes in with label 20 says oh I know what that label is that's label 20 what I do with that because this is the end of the line I don't have anything anybody else that's giving me any labels for this um, that's directly connected so what I do is I'm going to go ahead and pop this label so I've got this packet, I pop off label 20, sweet. But now I've got a packet with no label on it. So if we go back and review, label packet, look it up in the LFIB. Unlabeled packet, go ahead and look it up in the Ceph table. So R4 is actually going to do a second lookup on this to get the routing. So it's going to say, you know, untagged, send me to the uh, Ceph table. Ceph table says, yeah, I know that guy. That's your uh, that's your loopback zero interface. Let me go ahead and send this out to it. 
So basically the takeaway here is that, you know, as we would imagine normal MPLS working, this last hop router is going to have to do two lookups. It's going to have to do a lookup in its LFib and then a lookup in its um, routing table. It's actually going to do both of these these operations. And, you know, in a normal network, you know, or a small network, I should say, that's not a big deal. You know, it's an extra step. But if this guy, this R4, is a provider edge router sitting on the edge of the internet with 300,000 routes, you're going to want to make that uh, operation a little more efficient. Probably not do two lookups if you can only do one. So um, how do we go ahead and get rid of one of these lookups? Well, that's where you enter the concept of Pentultimate Hop Popping, or PHP. Uh, not to be confused with the PHP scripting used in web development. Now, this is hands down my favorite technical term. I mean, you look at that pentultimate hop popping. It's like, wow, that's a wordy motherfucker right there. And the first time I saw this, I had no idea what it was. I thought it was referring to some form of satanic break dancing. But I came to find out that that was actually referred to as pentagrammatical body popping. And yeah, pentagrammatical, probably not a word. But it suits my needs, so live with it. Anywho. Pentultimate hop popping. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, fancy pants definition and try to stay awake while I read through this. Um, in order to save an additional lookup on an egress label switch router, the egress label switch router assigns the implicit null label to a forwarding equivalence class, thereby requesting the upstream label switch router to perform a pop operation. <sighs> Pentultimate hop popping is enabled by default in Cisco IOS. Okay, well, if you read or heard that, or both, <laughs> and you understood it, go ahead and stop the video because this will be of no use to you. When I saw this, I had no freaking clue what this is about. I, the definition actually made me more confused than just the term.